Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. Fifteen years ago, the New York Times featured this letter to the editor. It was somebody complaining about ski conditions at Whistler Ski Area in British Columbia, and they said the problems were due to global warming. The last three times I was there, the snow was consistently slushy. The blowers were on constantly, and there was no skiing at all on the lower half of the mountain. On two of those days, it was raining at the top of Blackham, which is roughly 8,000 feet high. Fifteen years ago, the New York Times still occasionally allowed other points of view, and they allowed the ski area to respond. Whistler Blackcomb's location in the coast range brings an average of 33 feet of snow each season from pounding coastal storms. It is extremely rare for the mountain peaks to receive rain in winter. It's unfortunate that your reader experienced it more than once. So 15 years ago, they averaged 33 feet of snow, and now they average 35 and a half feet of snow. So their snowfall is up almost 10% from 15 years ago. Whistler opens up this Thursday and it looks like they've got some pretty fantastic snow. The global warming story wasn't working out very well for them, so alarmists switched over to the climate change fueled weather extreme story. If they don't get enough snow, it's due to global warming, and if they get a lot of snow, it's extreme weather caused by climate change. The New York Times was pretty busy 15 years ago, and right before Christmas of that year, they announced the endless summer. It's not that I don't like 60 degree days and eating fresh spinach right out of my garden in December, but the extended growing season is one of the signs of global warming. It goes hand in hand with polar bears dying in the Arctic as the sea ice shrinks. Somehow, planting kiwis on Long Island correlated with polar bears dying in the Arctic. Let's take a look now and see how New York's endless summer is working out 15 years later. Six of New York's 15 largest snowstorms have occurred since the beginning of 2006. And in fact, New York's second largest snowstorm occurred during the year when the New York Times announced the endless summer. As far as Arctic sea ice goes, there's a lot more ice now than there was 15 years ago when that article was written. And there's about the same amount of ice as there was 25 years ago. I've spent much of the last 14 years documenting New York Times climate nonsense. And here's a complete list of all the retractions they've made for their past 14 years of climate junk science and misinformation. Meanwhile, back in the Twitter world, I've been banned for 12 hours. They said I violated the rules. They sent me this email saying I violated the rules for profile location, profile username, profile bio, profile image, profile website, profile name, and profile header. And they said that repeated violations may lead to a permanent suspension of my account. And here's my profile, which they say violated the rules. I'm not sure if it's the picture of Toto or the waterfall, which they found to be deeply offensive. Perhaps if I changed my style to be more like these people, Twitter would like me better. And it makes perfect sense because experts say that climate change is worse than terrorism. Toto thinks that the human race is living out some sort of clown world right now, and it'd be pretty hard to disagree with him. You can visit Toto, Kyrie, and Caesar on the web at realclimatescience.com.